Okay. Hello, folks. Um, what we usually do is I read to you the last seven daily inspirations, and then you guys pick one, and we and we go from there. Last seven. November. I'm sorry. October twenty seventh. Experiencing more happiness in your everyday life. October twenty eighth. Five steps that assist us in releasing judgment and feeling feeling peace. October 29th, who is the person in front of you? October 30th, forgiving the past and setting ourselves free. October 31, unloving thoughts are mask we wear. And uh, page. November 1, there is no shame in struggle. November 2, experiencing a less judgmental, sarcastic, and critical world. And November 3, six steps for creating a less judgmental and more peaceful world. Any of those interests? What was the one about releasing judgmental thoughts? Uh, there's one, you mean in the, the November 2nd one? Experience the the earlier one. one. No, it was one of the first okay. ones you said. Okay. One second. Um, five steps that assist us in releasing judgment and feeling peace. Yeah. All right. Let's begin there then. I guess I'll just make a comment after each step. Six steps, actually. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, Daily Inspirations, October 28th, Six Steps That Assist Us in Releasing Judgment and Feeling Peace, Condensed Version. All right. Today, if the ego knocks on your mind's door and demands that you judge yourself or others, consider trying the following. Number one, before every interaction, remind yourself of your goal for the day. To let go of judgment and thus become a reflection and representative of the states of non-judgment and peace. Step number two, instead of judging others as the ego has trained us to do, offer them gratitude, silently or not, for being part of our healing and awakening process. This process is helping you recall that it is you, not the ego's past programming, who should be in control of your thinking and thus of your mind and life. Step number, number three, Practice offering the opposite of what the ego demands. If the ego demands judgment, offer forgiveness. If it is insists on condemnation, offer compassion. If it demands that you curse others, then silently pray for their healing, health, peace, and joy. Step number four. Acknowledge to yourself that no matter how unpleasant the ego says that the situation is, the choices of forgiveness over judgment, compassion over condemnation, and thus experiencing peace over pain are always available to you in each moment and interaction. Step number five, throughout the day, continue to remind yourself to align with your goal of non-judgment and peace. Consciously make non-judgment and peace your constant companions. And the last point, point number six, find your, when you find yourself in the ego's grip, judge yourself or others, do not despair or punish yourself or others. Instead, recognize that the ego is in control of your mind. Stop supporting its mindset and, the, and way of thinking with your time, focus, and, and energy. Then take back control of your mind by allowing your thoughts of the expression of love that best, best fits that moment or interaction. Okay. So how do we release judgment and feel a little more peace? All right. We know that the ego answers first and loudest, correct? And so uh, it's somewhat, I guess you would call it natural to react in a judgment, judgmental manner, at least for the first few seconds. And so what you want to remind yourself is, okay, the ego has trained me to react to judgment when things seem not to be going my way. Okay. Let me make a conscious decision to set my goal for the day. My goal for the day is to achieve peace in each and every interaction and each and every situation. And so the way to get to a place of peace is through the act of non-judgment. 
So my goal today in each and every situation is to reach the state of peace through the act of non-judgment. And so my goal in each, this interaction or every interaction is non-judgment. And non-judgment will lead me to the state of peace. A way to non-judgment is through the act of forgiveness. Because when the ego says judge, you always want to do the opposite of what the ego demands. So if the ego demands judgment, then uh, slow your breathing down and remind yourself, wait a second. I want to do the opposite of what the ego recommends or demands. Because the ego's roads never deliver to me the state of peace. Okay, the ego demands judgment, I'm going to forgive. The ego demands condemnation, I'm going to offer compassion. And so the more you practice being proactive in your situations, in your interactions, the more the interactions and situations becomes a means to achieve your goal, which is peace and non-judgment. And so when you walk hand in hand with peace and non-judgment, then you'll, you'll have a smoother path to the state of peace. And so that's basically point number one. Okay. And then in point number two, practice making gratitude your reaction to your brother or sister. Because what's really happening today? Okay. Today we are deprogramming ourselves from the act of judgment. So for us to deprogram ourselves from the act of judgment, somebody has to volunteer for us to be in our interactions so that we can pra practice letting go of our judgments and offering them forgiveness and thus achieving the state of peace. And so those brothers and sisters who come into our experience, no matter what story the ego is saying about them, what is really happening? They have volunteered so that you can find a way to non-judgment and peace. And so if you recognize that what, they, what they're what they truly doing is offering you the opportunity to practice choosing forgiveness over judgment and thus peace over pain, then your response to them is gonna be gratitude, okay? And so practice remembering them with a sense of gratitude. Thank you for being a part of my interactions today because by you being here in this interaction, you are offering me the opportunity to practice non-judgment. So, thank you. Uh, point number three is, you know, the exact same thing we said before, just do the opposite of what the ego demands. So the ego itself is a self-destructive mechanism in the sense that it has to survive by the tools that we use that align ourselves to it. And so what are the tools of the ego? Judgment, anger, resentment, hatred, fear, worry, doubt, shame, guilt. Anything that's unloving in nature, those are the tools of the ego. And uh, sometimes when we get stuck in his tool, tools and using his tools, what do we do? We usually condemn ourselves, right? And we say, oh, I'm not spiritual enough, or I haven't read enough, or I have not, not, not this or that enough. <laughs> and so the ego, little, little by little, has you sink into its quicksand, you know, by you putting your time, focus, and energy on those delusions. So you slowly sink into its quicksand. And so what you want to do is just practice recognizing quicker and quicker when you're using the ego's tools. And then pat yourself on the back for recognizing, okay, right now I'm using, I'm using judgment or resentment or frustration or worry or guilt or shame. Okay, good. Good for me. I recognize that I'm using the ego's tools right now. But today I'm going to do the opposite of what the ego demands. And so I'm going to use the ego not to condemn myself or others, but I'm going to use the ego to do the opposite of what, what it demands and therefore to bring me to the state of peace. And so when now you use the ego to help you deliver to you the state of peace, 
Now the ego becomes an ally in your awakening process. Now the ego is a friend in your awakening process. And so now you don't have to condemn the ego. You don't have to condemn yourself for using the ego. You don't have to condemn others for, for being in alignment with the ego. Now your response to them is gratitude. And your response to yourself is congratulations that you caught yourself using the ego's tools. And okay, that's point number three. <laughs> point number four. Acknowledge you yourself that no matter how unpleasant the ego says the situation is. Okay. Uh, so, and point number four is simply, no matter how complicated the ego says that the situation is, no matter how much you should judge your brothers or sisters, no matter how complicated the ego's story is, you're always just one simple and gentle choice away from forgiveness and thus from peace. Okay? So the ego's going to try to complicate the story, make it big. <laughs> and so by making it big, you get stuck in it, you know, and you think you have some freedom because it's so big, but you're just really stuck in it. And then you think, well, it's, this is so big that I can't really forgive right now. This is too much. I can't forgive this. I can forgive this, but I can't forgive this, right? So the ego tries to trick you into getting you to a level where you cannot find unforgiveness. But what the Holy Spirit, our conscious God, source, Jesus, whoever that is that you <laughs> talk to, uh, he, she, source, is always reminding you that you're always just a choice away from peace. I can choose peace instead of judgment. I can choose non-judgment instead of judgment. Okay, I'm in judgment. That's fine. Guess what? I can choose non-judgment right now. And thus, I can achieve peace right now. No matter what the ego says, or no matter how unworthy the ego says that your brothers or sisters are of non-judgment. Because remember, we're all one, right? And so if you do not offer your brother or sister forgiveness, who gets in prison within your own mind? Your brothers and sisters get imprisoned in here. And then you toss and turn at night and you don't know why. Why? Are you tossing and turning at night? Why are you stressed out? It's because you are holding within yourself unforgiving thoughts. And unforgiving thoughts do not belong inside God's child and creation. And so obviously there's a disalignment, there's an unalignment, if that's even a word, <laughs> about uh, where the thoughts <laughs> you're carrying within and with your peaceful, loving nature. And so just remember, don't, don't panic. <laughs> no matter the situation, don't panic. You're always just a simple choice away from peace. No matter how unworthy the ego says that your brother or sister is of forgiveness or compassion or mercy or grace. Remember, forgiveness, compassion, mercy or grace, those are expressions of love. And love is our creator. So love is our father, in essence. And so forgiveness, compassion, mercy and grace, those are our father's inheritance to us because those are love's expressions. And we as God's children and creations are forever worthy of God's inheritance. And so because of that, forgiveness, mercy, and grace, non judgment are always just a simple choice away. And uh, let's see. Okay. Point number five is throughout the day, continue to remind yourself to align with your goal. And so this is not something that you do like you meditate five minutes in the morning <laughs> and then you have one interaction with your brother and sister and it's peaceful and everything everything is groovy. No. <laughs> Keep reminding yourself throughout the day, <laughs> my goal today is non-judgment and thus peace. So it's something you have to remind yourself throughout the day. So when your brother or sister trigger you and the ego says judge them, that's a perfect opportunity for you to remind yourself, what is my goal today? Oh, thank you. Thank you, brother. My ego will say to judge you, but well, that's triggering me the rem reminder that I'm supposed to use non-judgment today. I'm, I'm, I'm worthy of this day of peace. And so thank you for that. 
And uh, that's about it. That's the basic daily inspiration. <laughs> anybody have any issues with judgment and releasing those judgments in order to achieve forgiveness and peace? All day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, like uh, our friend Mike always says, you know, practice, practice, practice. And so what your brother and sister is actually offering you are the opportunities to practice. Mm. Remembering that you, you can forgive and thus you can achieve the state of peace in each moment and interaction. And so the more times you get to practice that, for, that choice for forgiveness, thank you, brother or sister, for that. And so be, pat yourself on the back because God is never going to offer you anything that you can't handle. And so if you're going through a situation in which you're really, you're really attached to judgment and you're in pain because of that, un, may, it may be an unconscious pain because you're carrying that stuff with you. Uh, just remember that uh, you're always just a simple choice away from peace. And the way you get to that state of peace, the way you get to Carnegie Hall is by practice. And so each and every person who who the ego says condemn, that's an opportunity to practice. Practice choosing non-judgment over non-judgment over judgment and thus peace over, over pain. So that person there who triggered you is actually that person there who's freeing you from your thoughts of judgment and condemnation and anger and resentment and shame and guilt. And so thank you, person X or Y for coming into my life and triggering me. Because you're offering me the opportunities to remember that I'm always just a simple choice away from peace. Sounds simple, right? I think I hope I made it sound simple. It does sound simple. Okay, I won't that's... agree with how it sounds. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have any judgment or self judgment uh, situations this week where they get they got a little too attached to judgment and we're having difficulty in finding that level of forgiveness and thus peace. Well, clearly me, or I wouldn't keep asking you to talk about it. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> let's uh, let's play with an example. Tell tell us a, a situation. Um. Well, I was upset with my sister. Okay. And then I, you know, spent a lot of time visualizing my grievances going away and sending her love and all of that good stuff. And I love my sister, but it keeps coming back. And like, now I'm actually predicting future issues. Like at Thanksgiving, my brain is moving into that. So my question is, can you like judge the action, but love and forgive the person? Um, can you judge the action? Well, if you want <laughs> the to, behavior, well, it's called free will. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to do. Well, I'm aware, but you know, I, I assume, you know, what I'm asking is, can you find a peace by condemning an action, but forgiving the person? Okay. Remember the only, in reality, only love is real, right? Okay. So if you yeah. want to, if you want to condemn the dream, then know that you're just going to be stuck in the dream. Okay. If you want to condemn the nightmare, the monsters in the nightmare, then you're just going to keep running away from the monsters in the, in the nightmare. And so you can live in, in the night, nightmare all you want, as long as you want. Okay, that's free will. But sooner or later, you're going to get sick of the nightmare. You're going to be sick of running from the monsters in your dreams. And your body's going to say, hey, wake up. <laughs> wake up. And then when you wake up, you're going to say, you know what? This judgment of my sister is not really offering me any level of peace. So why should I continue to support thoughts or a way of thinking that does not support me and does not bring me the state of peace? Why? No matter what the ego says, no matter how how large her, 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 her action was or how easy to condemn her action was, according to the ego. It's not that huge, but clearly it bothered me enough that I won't let it go. Okay. And that's fine. You don't have to let it go. Because deep down inside, you don't believe that you're worthy of peace. And so what's going to happen is that you're going to keep it inside of you as long as you want. 
It's called free will, universal law. <laughs> You're going to go ahead and keep all the pain that you want, all the judgment that you want, as long as you want, until you get sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. Yeah, until you get sick and tired of feeling judgmental when your sister comes to mind. Okay? And then sooner or later, that's going to happen. And you're going to say, man, enough is enough. I'm, I'm sick and tired of feeling this way when I think about my sister. Is there not a better way? Is there not a better, an easier way to peace? And then you're going to decide, you know what? Okay, I've, I've judged and judged and judged when my sister comes to mind, I judge her. That never delivers me the state of peace. Let me try to forgive her, man. Let me just think about her and think only positive, loving, compassionate thoughts. My, my goal is to align my mind with the mind of God in each situation and in each moment. And the mind of God is love. And one of the expressions of that love is forgiveness and compassion and mercy and grace. So if you want that peace and compassion and mercy and grace, if you want to experience that within yourself, you're going to have to make those choices to offer that to your sister because we're all one. And so it's only, it's what you offer your sister that you get to experience yourself. So as long as you judge your sister, when she comes into your mind, as long as you judge her, you will not achieve the state of peace, no matter what the ego says. Okay. Maybe the ego will give you a, a sense of a false power over your sister because you're condemning her and somehow you think it's making her feel bad when <laughs> she's not even noticing what's going on. Think of Buddy Hackett, old, old, old time comedian. He said, uh, uh, don't carry a grudge because while you're carrying that grudge, the other guy is out dancing. So, so yeah. So when the, your sister comes to mind, she's just offering you another up, another opportunity to remember that you are worthy of peace. And you get to the place of peace by offering her the forgiveness, the compassion, the mercy and grace that God would offer her. Uh, Christina, you have your hand up. Yeah, um, I wanted to share something interesting that I, I was listening to today. And I was um, watching these videos about grief. And it was interesting because this person was talking about how like when we lose someone, whether through death or whether through um, like them leaving our lives in some way, we have to like grieve the relationship that we thought we were going to have with this person in the future. And like thinking about what Wendy's saying, it's they were talking about finding a place of acceptance when like someone's no longer in our life or someone has changed and they're no longer this person that they either were or that we had hoped they would be in our lives. And like with this dynamic that Wendy has expressed, like it's even making me apply this grief idea to this because it's like having to grieve the idea of what you thought your sister or your relationship your, with your sister would maybe look like, because that's what they were talking about. Like in the process of grief, like grieving, not only the loss of like a loved one, if they pass away, but like maybe how the relationship with your parents change because of the, the, the loss or how different dynamics in the family change because of the loss. And so how it really threads and starts to impact many different things. And it just reminds me of how like, right, like, I feel like I'm always in a constant state of like having to grieve and find a new acceptance as relationships evolve and change in my life. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the person has always died. But sometimes it's just my expectations around a friendship or the dynamic I have with someone or my relationship with my sister who is currently not speaking to me. And it's just very interesting because I do have to process that. And even though she may come back into my life, it's like I have to find acceptance like, oh, right. This is like kind of her M.O. Like this is what she does. She gets mad and then she doesn't talk to me for a year and then she comes back. And like instead of like being angry at her, it's like meeting her where she's at and she's just behaving in the same way she's always behaved. And I think that that's where I land in acceptance but when it first happened this time around, I was upset and I had to almost like mini grieve, you know, like her now again, detaching from my life and, 
and accept like, okay, this is how she acts. And I feel like it gets a little easier every time. Um, and I don't know if that was helpful at all, but like, it's almost like, not that it's funny, but it's almost like, oh, right. Like this is, this is her patterning. Like this is her behavior and I'm personalizing it, but it's not personal. And so I can go through the process. And I think even a denial, like I was in like a denial when she was doing this again. And I was like, I can't believe this is happening. And it's like, wait, but like, this is what she always does, you know? And then, then I can kind of find some levity in it. And, and I think that that's the acceptance. I don't know if that's helpful or that's not. That's incredibly but... helpful. Cause what you <laughs> helped exactly, me. that's exactly it that I, it, it, it does feel like I'm. And reading. I feel bad to laugh at it, but I'm kind of now like, oh my God, this is what she always does. Like she throws well, I would like to laugh at my sister too, but I don't feel like laughing. I'm up, I, you know, I feel upset. Like, right, like, right. I, I was there know. too. Yeah, like I that too. sister, and I expect her to support me in whatever way that she didn't, and you know what I mean. I took it very, very personally. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And and I've been, and that's where like that's what they were talking about, like how how we do take these things personally because we expect that a sister, like we have this idea in our minds, like oh, this is what a sister sister relationship should look like, or a parent relationship should look like, and when those expectations aren't met because something happens or because the person takes a different course, we do have to grieve the shift now in the relationship. And that is a form of grief, um, even if the person is still alive, you know? So, yeah. yeah. You're right. That's what it is. It's hard for me to be sad about it. So it's easier for me to be mad about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a part of the process, right? Like yeah. the bargaining, the anger, the denial then the acceptance and then going through it all over again and like the different like stages of grief you know um so that's probably why I'm stuck because I keep telling myself you know this is you know she probably was doing the best she could she made the choice she thought was best I'm like you know I'm trying to tell myself that but that doesn't address how hurtful it was to me you know what I mean like I'm trying mm -hmm. to give it by just saying this is how she is like you were saying but I didn't deal with really how upset I was about it and there's nothing I can do like I'm not going to talk to her about it it would just make it worse I have to do what you said which is you know get myself through that process and I I can see that that now because as you were talking it was like all right there so that's what it is I just don't want to deal with the you know the upset of it of, of myself like the how I took it can I say something Yes, please. I can so relate to you, Wendy. Um, I I think I've said this before. I have to forgive. I I feel like I have to forgive my brother every interaction that I have with him. This morning we had one, and um, he blew up on at, at me over something that was a misunderstanding, something that he didn't read or, or whatever, and and he blew up. And I was taking care of my mom, so I had to keep it cool, and I usually do keep it cool. Um, but I, that anger is there. Um, the sadness has been there too. I feel like I've felt every emotion with him and the only one that helps me, you, you had mentioned your sister doing the best that she can. I, it really helps me to, to think that way because I really, and, 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 and I really believe that as hard as it is and as sad as it is, right. Because he flies off the handle. Um, you know, it, it has shortened the time that I, I stay in that anger or in that sadness. Cause I've been dealing with this for such a long time. Um, and, and there was a, a time where I would just, you know, interact with him and try to make things better and almost like, yeah, try, try to bargain with him. And, um, I feel like I'm more accepting now. And sometimes I'm actually, I avoid him and that is so not my personality. I'm not an avoider. Um, but I'm okay with it. I don't feel bad about it. Um, anymore so um yeah i i i i feel you it is it is it's 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 a a roller coaster and i feel like 
I, I never know what's going to happen when when I see him. And I try not to pre-plan and say, okay, this is going to be a disaster. He's going to, he's going to scream. Um, uh, and I, I, I try and I, I go in there with an open heart and when I'm upset with him because of things that he's done, I, um, have been able to actually let it go and not address it. If it's not an emergency, if it's not anything that needs to be addressed. And that has been so freeing, so difficult, but um, I know that addressing it will just end up in in a tremendous blow up, so. Uh, thank you. You guys have helped me so much that these are, it's helpful for me, first of all, to know I'm not the only person who's, oh. you know, who struggles like to let it go. I, I really do want to, but it's family is like, you know, it's rough sometimes. They're your biggest biggest lessons, right? It's it's rough all the time, I, I I think, but it really has has gotten better for me. And that piece of, I mean, I, I think you can't always not be around them, right? The holidays come and um yeah. <laughs> um yeah, you you do the the I don't know. I was gonna say uh, oh. the best you can. I've I've had very tumultuous holidays, unfortunately, with my brother because they seem to trigger him, and um, I have had some holidays without him. And as sad as that feels, um, it's just had to be, um, yeah. And it's actually, in go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I was going to say it was more his his choice, but I was like, woohoo, a good choice for everyone. Um, because I wouldn't do that to my mom because my mom, regardless, it's his child and wants him there. So I have sucked it up many a times. Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, but go ahead. Um, it's interesting because I was um having a conversation with someone on Sunday about this and I think that like what I always have to go back to when I am navigating these situations, especially with family is like detaching from the family member as the role that they play in my life as my family member, whether, and I was actually t speaking about my dad when I was in Costa Rica and I was like, you know, there were many times like the course the, when I, when I did the Thursday class was so helpful for me because it was almost like my oxygen mask before I was like going back in there, you know? Um, and it was interesting because so many times I've had to learn to like detach from this dynamic with my dad of like father, daughter and remind myself that like, okay, he's my father. Okay. Aside from a father, he's a man and an individual. And then aside from that, above all, he is a child of God and a spirit on a spiritual journey. And we are all characters in this play helping each other grow. And it's like when I'm able to like detach from like daughter, father, and like see him as a soul and a spirit also having a life experience and journey that needs to grow and expand and that like his journey is his journey and I don't always have to get sucked into the story, that helps me. And that helps me a lot with my sister too, because I've had to learn to step away when she's throwing her grenades because she throws them at me, she throws them at her, my mom, she throws them at different people. And I'm like, oh, the common denominator here is her. And she doesn't see that but I don't have to be the punching bag. And I think that that's also a part of my soul's journey where I have been the punching bag for a long time. And there's a way to establish boundaries and allow people to live their life and do what they're going to do um, without me trying to fix them or, or get them to conform to the model that I think that they need to um, conform to. Um, and so that's also just been very helpful for me like that just to recognize that they are also a spirit on a journey of expansion and I can move away from that if That's it's hurtful to me. Very helpful also. This is why I love to come to these groups. Free therapy. Guys. Thanks guys. Love you. <laughs> uh, Shelly, go ahead. Thank you. Christina, I love what you 
all that that you explained. I feel like you came full circle with it all. Um, so I was going to add to that, which I feel like you already put into words for the most part, is people are always showing us who they are. And um, when I get frustrated with certain personalities in my family, I'm like, okay, this person, this is how they are. Can I accept them for who they are? And that seems to help me get to the part of forgiveness. And I, I don't know, it always comes down to, can I just accept this person for who they are? I mean, what else is there to do, you know? And I feel like you kind of explained that as you were going through the different processes that you were talking about. So thank you for that. And thank you, Wendy, for, or Yvonne, Wendy, who brought yeah, it up. It's yeah, me. Wendy, thank you. Thank well, you. Well, you it's know, it's beautiful. We're all on the same kind of like, we all have kind of like the same similar experiences. Yeah. And then I think that now I can maybe like re reframe this in my mind and just be like what you said, a little bit of detachment. Like, look, this is just how she is, you know, like if I don't take it personally, it's okay. This is just how she is. She did what she thought was the best thing to do. And can I love her ever anyway? Of course I can love her anyway. So that's really what I have to focus on is, you know, I love my sister. And if she acts in a way I don't like, well, I still love her. So that's what I'm going to focus on instead of the act that I did not care for. And believe me, out of everything, it's bizarre to me that, that I would stick to this, you know, stick on it so hard. But I realized that a lot of times, this is a, a fairly recent uh, realization for me. Um, sometimes I conflate things. So I lost my friend. It makes me in a very vulnerable, lost or she died. I, it put me in a very vulnerable emotional position. So then my somebody upsets me and my expectation is this is a family member who loves me. She knows that I just had this extreme loss. Why wouldn't she go the extra step to, you know, be loving instead of doing something upsetting to me? But that's the wrong, you know what I mean? I've got it all tangled up together. That's the wrong thing. She did what she did. I, I don't actually think she was doing anything out of malice. She just is reactive, like so many of us, including me, are, you know, gets huffy really quickly, didn't like uh, something that I didn't think was any problem. And you can, with her, you know, it's walking on eggshells. If you say one thing, that's it. <laughs> she's done and you're out. So I, I know she's like that. And I just has nothing to do with the fact that my friend died. This is just how she is. And I just going to have to leave it like it is and love her anyway. It wasn't, you know, she didn't do anything horrible. She just did something I didn't like. So sounds like we have the same sister. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I also don't, I, I also think it's okay um, uh, to not be okay with someone's behavior. You don't want to like, um, you know, let it cook your liver like Mike says, but if someone does something that's, insulting or you know mean you don't have to like it right you could be like whoa that was you know that was hurtful or or, or whatever but not harp on it and you know let it ruin ruin your day because it's always about them it's always about the person who's behaving however they're they're behaving it's not about the the receiver so. That makes sense. And if you knew what this was, you all would probably just laugh at me, although you're not judgmental. So maybe you wouldn't. Maybe you would just be like, <laughs> that's an amazing amount of grudge to carry for something like this. I should tell you what it is so I can let the air out of it. Can I just tell you really quickly? Because you're going to think it's so ridiculous. Go ahead. I was talking to my sister. Uh, this is my younger sister. She's 17 years younger than me. So I had a very maternal relationship with her when she was little because I'm so much older. But she has two young children. I adore them. She is exceedingly huffy. This is a family trait. I have it myself. I've worked on it a lot. And you do have to walk on eggshells around her because absolutely, if you say the wrong thing, you know what I mean? Like, you're out. But um, I, I, she, she, we were talking. I told her my friend died. She was very compassionate. I'm so sorry. Is there anything I can do to help you or whatever? During the course of this conversation, I said, well, you know, I was going to cancel my party, my Halloween party, but I really actually think it'll be good for me. And I'm so looking forward to, I really wanted my sisters to meet my friends who I consider you guys like a second family to me after a year. And I said something that she didn't like, this was, I was on the car. 
What I said was she has two little kids who I absolutely adore. And at all the family gatherings, they want to spend time with me alone. And I love to do that with them. But if I'm hostessing, I can't do that. I can't like let them lead me away and go into a room for an hour. You know what I mean? I have to like take care of guests. So I just said to her, I had a little bit of anxiety about that. And I said, you, you know, could you, you know, explain to them that when you're the host of a party, you can't really go off with, with guests and be alone for, for a while. And that was it. She was like, well, I don't think we should go. And I'm like, no, 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 I want you to go. No, I don't think we should. I said, no, Jeannie, I want you there. I want you to meet my friends. Well, it doesn't sound like it's a children's party. Are there other children there? And I said, Shelly's going to be there. That's our, you know, her, their cousin. She's disabled. She's 23, but it's like a child. You know what I mean? And I, and she's like, I'll talk to Emmanuel. I said, please, Jeannie, don't be mad. And don't, don't, don't not come to the party. I really want you to be my friends. I'll talk to Emmanuel. And that, that's her husband. That's it. Didn't hear from her for like a week and a half. And then finally, I didn't know if she was coming or not. And to be quite frank I didn't want to text her because I you know what I mean I was like I didn't know if I wanted to hear the answer so I just texted him on well her husband he plays guitar my brother-in-laws usually play guitar at my parties it's beautiful and um and I said if you, you know Jeannie didn't get back to me I don't know if you guys are coming but here's the song list and then my sister wrote me and she's like well I hope you understand we made other plans because it doesn't sound like a kid's party so I'm gonna have a play date but while I had been talking to her on the phone, I had said to her, my first, my dad wasn't going to come because Lily's significant another is trans. So that was the first part of the family to back out. And him, I, you know, he's 90 years old. He's on Oxy. I'm not, I, he doesn't want to come to a Halloween party. It's fine. But they were going to be home. And Jeannie said, well, you know, dad and my mom aren't going. That's my stepmother. And I said, well, would you want to, you know, leave the kids with them and just come by for like an hour, you know, and meet my friends? And she said, no, I don't like to leave them. Well, she leaves them every day while they're at work. So she was just mad at me and huffy. And so I, I just, I took it very personally, especially because like I said, she knew how much this meant to me. And then my other sister didn't come because normally they can't stay out late because of their disabled daughter, but normally they come a few hours before my party and the whole family visits and then it crosses over into whoever else comes. So none of my family was there. And I was thrilled I had a beautiful party but I was very disappointed because I really wanted my sisters to meet everybody so that's what happened not not something to be you know like taking over my brain like this I don't think but it's painful for me I I, I could I feel it I I understand that I, I think I would feel similar but can you can you recognize that it was more about her than about you her discomfort yeah, she didn't. She felt that I was, I guess, insulting the, the kids that I wouldn't spend time alone with them. But she knows I adore them. I, you know, I make special time for them at every gathering. Right, because, right. Because her older son likes to have me to himself and tell me all about his life. And it's an honor. You know, she knows sure. I love those kids. It's but it, so it was about her, though. It was all yeah. about. her. Yeah. yeah. OK. OK. What we want to do is we want to try to simplify <laughs> Uh, the ego's delusional story. Okay? okay. Yeah. The ego is going to tell a thousand stories. Okay. And then you're going to have to have a thousand solutions to solve those thousand stories. But the only okay. solution is to forget, right? Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> and so what I want to what I want to say is that. Okay, everybody is going to have a story that takes you away from the state of peace. And you know when it's the ego story because it is taking you away from the state of peace. Okay, so it doesn't matter the story. The story in reality does not matter. Okay, because what, what is happening? No matter what your sister did, you are always defining what your sister did, okay? So what she did or did not do or said or did not say is in reality absolutely meaningless because you are defining that experience. You are putting yourself in hell or you are putting yourself in heaven, okay? If you're in hell, which means if you lack peace, then you have followed the eagle's stories. Okay? 
Now, there is another way. We can remember, okay? We can remember each and every one of us have co-designed our journeys with the divine. The divine is perfection. The divine only creates perfectly. And so your sister's journey is perfect exactly the way it is. And your journey is perfect exactly the way it is. Whatever she wants to do, it's perfect for her. And if it's perfect for her, be happy for her. If it's not for a mentor, for her to bring the kids, be, be ecstatic. Hey, she co-created this with God. I'm going to decide that I'm going to remember that when I trust my ego, I'm going to judge her journey and I'm going to lack peace. Simple. When I trust in the divine, I'm going to trust her journey is perfect. And I'm going to, and I'm going to have peace. There's a way to peace and there's a way to pain. <laughs> and so remember this story here is really meaningless. Are you on the path to pain or on the path to peace? If you're in the path to, to paid, know that you're being guided by the ego. You're paying attention to the ego and you're letting the ego think for you. And if you're letting the ego think for you, you're never going to be living your life. Because it's the ego who's living your life for you. And then you're going to feel a lack of peace. You're going to feel a lack of fulfillment. You're going to feel a lack of joy. Why? Because you're simply a zombie. You're a zombie to the ego's little silly games which you put so much attention to, okay? And so remember, the story is not real. Her story is perfect, whatever that is, whatever her journey is, perfect. Whatever your journey is, it's perfect. If you trust that perfection, you will have peace. If you're gonna judge the perfection, <laughs> you're never gonna have peace. And so if, we have, if we're having an issue with a sister or a brother, or a mom, or whatever. It's not, it's, they are not to blame, okay? It's your perception of them that has to shift. And that's good news. That's very good news. Because if something out there had to shift for you to have peace, that means 8 billion people out there would have to, to act exactly the way you want them to act for you to have peace. Okay, do you wanna live that life where 8 billion people out there have to act exactly the way your ego says they should act for you to have peace? Is that really a way to peace? Or do you wanna to say to yourself, okay, wait a second, how much judgment am I gonna freaking carry in my life? Am I not tired of carrying that judgment, that blame, that resentment, that anger, that pain, that regret, that shame, that guilt. How much longer am I going to freaking carry this? Stop judging other people's journeys. Other people's journeys are always perfect for them. They are, in reality, I think it was uh, Shelley was saying, people are showing you who they are. No. People are showing you who they think they are who they really are is God's perfect creation and if you see them only as God sees them you will always have peace and so if you see them through God's eyes through love's lens like you were created to do you are going to live heaven on earth okay heaven on earth is always just a simple choice away it's just, it's just like you're so stuck. We're all so stuck in believing in the ego's lies as true. Those lies that have never brought to us peace of mind or joy. Our brothers and sisters are perfect exactly as they are. They don't have to do anything differently. It's your job to see them, the truth in them, only the truth in them as true. See only the light in them as true. See the light in them as true, and you will live in that light. You will have that peace. See the story that the ego is trying to tell you that, that that's true, as true. See the light as true, and you're going to be in darkness, in confusion, 
in conflict, in pain. And so the, the beauty is that everybody's story is perfect for them. And so all your brothers and sisters doing is offering you the opportunity to remember that I can choose peace instead of the story. Whatever Wendy's story was, you know, and she was, she shared, shared it in detail, and that's perfectly fine. We all have those stories that we believe that are, that are true, that never deliver so, to us the state of peace. And so let go of the story. Free others from your judgments of them. Free them from your judgments and you will have peace. And if you have peace, you'll become the light of the world that God created you to be. If you free them from your judgments, you will be fulfilling your function as the light of the world. And only when you're fulfilling your function as the light of the world is the only time that you're ever going to truly feel at peace, joyful, and fulfilled. Because that's what you were created to do, to be a light within the darkness. To be a light for that sister who won't talk to you for a year. Bless her every time you think of her. Send her, send her loving notes every day. Tell that you love her. And what, why do you do that? Because you are worthy of peace. You don't want to think about that sister who's not going to speak to you for a year. Because every time you think of her, you're going to have sadness in your heart. You're going to be poisoning yourself with your own thoughts. If you don't have the courage and the understanding and the the understanding that you are worthy of peace. And so you have to remind yourself, I am worthy of peace. I can be loving towards my brother or sister, no matter what they think, say, or do. Send them only love, no matter what they think, say, or do. Because remember, they're either acting from a place of love or they're calling out for love. And so how do you properly answer a person's call for love? The only way is with love, okay? Love is the only thing that's truly worthy of you. But you have to make the conscious decision in each day and interaction to choose only love. No matter what the ego says, and the ego is gonna to try to convince you every single day that your brother or sister is unworthy of your love. Why? Why is the ego doing that? Because the ego doesn't want you to remember that you're worthy of God's love. Well, the most important thing that you just said is what I can use, which is instead of focusing on her, focus on myself and think I free you from my judgments. That I can do. That I can, that I can try to work with because that feels like a real thing to grapple with that I should be grappling with. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, James. And sorry, I took up all that time with my personal story, but I feel that everybody else has a, 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 a horse in that race too. So <laughs> maybe it was yeah, like, awesome like, to have that in common. Yeah, like we always say, everything's perfect, right, Mike? Everything's perfect. Yep. And whatever it is that we described in this, in this hour or so, whatever it is that you had to share with others, is perfect. You know, it was useful for all of us. I'm just re helping remind ourselves that only the love in each other is true. And when you and when you see and when you choose to see only the love in them is true, you're telling yourself that you're worthy of peace. Okay, and so God wants you to remember that you're worthy of peace. And so, take the steps towards bringing yourself to the state of peace. Each and every day, no matter what the, your brother or sisters, no matter how they act, always offer them who you truly are. We see them through God's lens, and and you will have a your conscience will be free. You won't have to carry any weight. You don't have to turn, toss and turn at night, because you're carrying your brothers and sisters with some sort of resentment and pain. No, you're free. You're free from from all that delusion. You don't have to carry that anymore. 
James, I'm not going to get any closure until you tell me I have to be grateful for her doing it. Yes, thank you. And then thank your sister for reminding you that you can choose peace in any situation. No matter what happens, I can choose forgiveness and thus I can experience peace. Thank you, sister, for helping me remember that. I think you know that's not going to happen. But I'm definitely going to work on the part of <laughs> I free you from my judgments. That part I can do. Okay, baby steps. <laughs> All right. Any other comments or questions? My comment is I love you guys. You yeah, help me so much. Is your hand still up or did you put your hand up? Um, I just wanted to ask one quick question. I know we're getting very short on time. Um, when I first started doing A Course in Miracles and I was struggling with this concept too, and I don't know if this was is the right thing, way to go, but like I couldn't, I was having a hard time seeing a positive thing about us, this situation that Wendy's talking about. Because yes, we all have a horse in that race. Um, they advised me to think of three very loving reasons of why they're behaving that way. And I still feel like that's the ego. You're, we're still engaging with the ego, but they were saying, think of three loving reasons why they did what they did and then go with the, the most loving one. <laughs> and it weirdly works for me. Um, cause I can't get from here to there. Like you, you know, like you're describing. So does that sound too far off? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Well, whatever, whatever steps, you know, when, when you have a lat, when you have to get to the rooftop, right. And you just, and you use a ladder, right. You're not going to, uh, you're not going to condemn each step on the ladder because right. you, each step of the ladder is useful to get you to your destination. Okay. So whatever you need to get you to the pace of peace, that's perfect. Okay. Perfect. And so use whatever you find useful and let go of everything else. One of the little exercises we did, I think Christina brought it up first a while back, is let's say you're having an issue with your sister, okay? Take a picture or get a picture of when your sister was a little child, you know, a little three, four, five, six year old. And just keep it in your wallet or in your purse. And anytime the ego wants you to look at, uh, at that child through judgment's eyes, the ego is going to fail because you're not going to be able to see the truth in your sister or your brother, that child in that the brother or sister with anything other than love. Because when you see a child, you can only love that child. It's not possible to look at a child and not love them. No matter, even if you only know them for a second, <laughs> you know, you see a child and you're like, oh my God, it's so, I'm so joyous to see a child. <laughs> And so, uh, and so, yeah. Take a, keep a little picture of your brother and your sister, and or anybody who's seeming to the, who's the ego is enjoying ju judging, and uh, and just put bring that picture up, look at it, bless it, and continue on your journey. And that's going to help you get closer to the state of peace. It's going to be a step on that ladder to peace. So yeah, all these all these little tools are, are, are lovely and helpful for all of us. All right, any final comments or questions before we close? Everybody enlightened? Everybody what? Everybody's enlightened? I am. I feel much lighter, actually. This this has been very helpful. The Yeah, it was great. It was. But I free you from my judgments is now going to get tattooed on my brain because I'm going to start working <laughs> with that. No, it's the greatest. It turns the focus on changing myself instead of, you know, yeah, instead of I, trying to make somebody else change. Yeah, and I free you from my judgments because I'm worthy of peace. Okay? Yes. I'm worthy of peace. So I free you from my judgments. All right. So we're all worthy of peace. And God willing, we will all see each other soon. Thank right. you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.